Welcome back to The Road Forward, a podcast for trucking industry leaders brought to you by TruckSpy, the all-in-one fleet management platform built to empower your drivers to be productive, compliant, and safe. My name is Alex, and today we're sitting down with Alex Mai. He is many things to many people, but the first is he's a truck driver. So, Alex, how long have you been a truck driver for? Uh, yeah, I've been a truck driver going on now about 12 years, sir. 12 years, goodness gracious. And you're not on the road much anymore, correct? Uh, I'm going to be 100% transparent right now. I am uh, not on the uh, road. Um, you know, honestly, probably the last 10, I was just at it working eight to nine months straight, three to four months off because we coin ourselves as bed buggers, movers, and the summertime is busy for us, but the wintertime is like completely slow. So if you're a responsible mover, you'll get in as much as you can during the summer and, you know, spring and, and what have you. And then when it gets winter, you just take that time off because less people are moving. You know, um, summertime's when uh, people take their kids, they're on vacation. They have opportunities to make that big change. And so that's kind of what that was and what my life was before social media. You know what I mean? Right. And yeah, for those of you just just tuning in or just listening, this is uh, Alex Mai. He, ha- he does have his own YouTube channel. That's why I said he's many things to many people. Um, you know, he has a really uh, a large channel. I think one of the largest trucking channels, right, if I'm not mistaken, um, over 350,000 I'll be honest subscribers. with you. Uh, yeah, probably uh, one of the bigger channels. And I would proud myself to say uh, uh, one of the biggest in just sharing information. So, uh, you know... As far as like uh, vlog style entertainment, um, there's probably so many channels that you could go watch that are amazing that probably have way more followers than I can ever imagine. Mm. But on mine, you're going to get the boring stuff. You know, what's the new rules? What's the new regulations? They just have a new thought about how they can make the ELD even worse for truck drivers. Okay, let me tell you that. So it's one of those things where it could keep you on the ball. Just so that if you want to be in the trucking industry, you can pretty much map out what direction you possibly might want to go if they're starting to do rules and regulations in the forefront now kind of thing, right? Right. That makes sense. And we're going to unpack a lot of these things here in, in the next, you know, over the next couple minutes. But uh, can you just briefly go over like how you got into trucking and, you know, your experience, just your, your like what got you up to here? Yeah, no, not a problem. So, uh Pretty much uh, since I was a kid, I'd go with my uncle every single summer moving furniture with him. Uh, I didn't think it paid anything. Uh, Pretty much just forced. My parents would say, hey, you're going with your uncle. My uncle is like my hero. I just wanted to go and help him. And, you know, you're jumping in this truck. And so all these years since I was, I don't know, honestly, probably eight I've been jumping in a truck every single summer with him, uh, helping him move furniture, clean the trailer, doing all this. And at the end of it, I'll be honest, I was like, I do not want to be a mover, like at all. Like this guy, he he runs me. He's a slave driver. I, I'm not doing this. So I, I was like, you know what? You guys didn't want me to be a trucker. You wanted me to learn some responsibility. I'm going to college. So go to college, get out, get a job as a assistant manager of a Walgreens making like 15 bucks an hour and really started kind of to have an honest conversation like the millions of people in America you don't know what you want to do you hear what you think people say you should do and the first one is usually go to college get an education you'll come out and you'll find your way to be a millionaire one day right and so the the truth hit me I, with all my education, with everything I had, I really couldn't make more than 50 grand a year. I just, no one would give me opportunities. That's all I had. And after kind of falling into that depression, my uncle kind of said, Hey, I think it was at a family function or something like that. I was maybe 25 at the time, 26. He's like, Hey, uh, look at this right here. And I'm like, Uncle, I don't want to make 20 grand a year. All right. All right, I don't know how much you make, but truck driver's probably making 20. He showed me what he made gross, and believe me, this is a different topic. Gross is not net. Correct. Of one load that made $35,000, 
for that week and a half because that's what it entails for movers. It's a big chunk of money, but then you got to hire people and all this other stuff. Right. I was like, wow, you made 35000 for the year? That's not bad. He's like, son, look at it again. And it was like April 1st to like April 14th. And I was like, dang. I quit Walgreens. Went to CDL school. Uncle, please train me the ways. He's like, what are you talking about? You literally know how to do the business. You just don't know how to drive the truck. Mm -hmm. I hop in the truck with him, train for a couple years, and boom, I'm on my own. And when I trained for a year with him, he did not pay me. And that was fine, but he gave me his truck. It was, you know, old school Eagle, Mm -hmm. international. And so I've had like everything he's had. After the Eagle, he, he got an international pro star. I got an international pro star. My international pro star broke down. His international st- uh, pro star broke down. He got another international pro star. I got another one. So people are like, Alex, why are you this guy with this international pro star? I'm like, whatever he does, I mimic it. Right. Right. This man right here, talking 35 years in the movie industry, came from Vietnam, didn't have much, and now owns 14 homes paid off in California. Wow. Like he was smart with his money. He took his money and every year he would just throw it into buying some real estate, you know, like this dude is my hero. Right. And so from that time, I'll be honest, start pretty much gaining a little bit of depression. Uh, trucking is a little bit, you know, in, until you really know it, you're broke down on the side of the road. You're looking at the time, my spaces and Facebooks and you're like, oh my gosh, the world is passing you by. On a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you start getting depressed, man. And uh, Jenna, my girl, was like, "You need to kind of snap out of this." And next thing you know, I start finding my way into the YouTube world, right? Right, right. And that's where I started making videos that nobody watched for a good six, seven years. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, that it, it's just the truth. Right. That's what that was, right? Right. And so, the long story long, right? right. And that's why I'm glad this these podcasts are great. Um, a lot of people just don't know what they want to do, man. And that's just the truth. And I was just one of those people and I was just lucky that I had an uncle and he was right. in a very niche, uh, industry in trucking and I was able to evolve from that. So that's right. kind of the long story of that. Right. And the reason I wanted you to kind of just go over that briefly is because, you know, like I've, I've been watching your channel for an extended period of time. And, you know, maybe somebody that's, uh, you know, just first time seeing you or seeing our channel or just getting an introduction to you, like they now know your your brief background about it. So uh, I appreciate you covering that. That's um, yeah. Shout out to your uncle, man. That's fantastic. And a lot of respect for him, you know, because a lot of people might not might not have done the same thing they wouldn't buy real estate they wouldn't they'd ball out they'd go you know get go get some watches and go get a fancy car load themselves up with a bunch of debt and then all of a sudden that may be where that trucking because there's you know the depression rates in trucking are a little bit higher than than normal and so it's like it makes sense it. it makes sense why because they instead of loading themselves up with assets they load load themselves up with responsibilities and then they're forced to keep trucking and then they don't see a way out of it. Um, and, and I always like your stance too on your YouTube channel. You're always defending the trucking, right? You're the truckers, the truck drivers, the individual motor carriers. Um, and, and that's good because, you know, recently it, it has started to seem that like, you know, through the pandemic, like, Oh, thank you truckers. Thank you to our drivers. But it's like trucking right. is a 60, 70 year industry or whatever, you know, like it's been around for 60 years and it right. took a global pandemic for them to recognize how, how, of an, how much of an important role truck drivers actually pay, but, you know, uh, play in, in, in you getting your day to day product. So, um, so it's fantastic. But I, and, um, the, I also said in the beginning, you're many things to many people, one of which also is you're a political liaison or like you, you had, you recently documented on your channel uh, about your visit to Congress. Yeah. How, how did that yeah, go? What, yeah. what insights did you learn? Like, talk to us about that experience. Okay. Yeah. So just before I get into that, like five seconds, uh, what ended up happening is you start making these YouTube videos and you don't really know what you're doing. You just don't know. Right. And one thing I found out about myself is I said, you know what, whatever truck drivers want to share, my platform, they could share. I, I don't care if they have a subscriber. I don't care if they have a social media. I actually don't even care if they want to grow their social media. Uh-huh. If they have something that is worth sharing to the world, jump on. 
And so I think there's so many times that as truck drivers, something bad happens to us somewhere. Mm-hmm. And people just think that, look, I don't need accountability for this because it doesn't matter. You're screwed, buddy. It doesn't matter. I'll find yeah. someone else to do it. Not anymore. Not anymore. Now people are like, hey, man, you're, you're going to treat me this way and you're not going to be uh, kind and fair. I'll just go to this mother trucker. He'll probably share my story. Right. And that could hurt your business. you know. And so sometimes I get coined as the guy that hurts the industry by – getting truck drivers fired, this and that, and or what have you, or you know, exploiting or leaking out things. But the truth is, if you feel a certain type of way, unless it's just straight, like uh, I, I believe it's just you're angry at the company, mm-hmm. I, I won't do that. I've, I've made mistakes as an amateur reporter and just right. taken the side of a trucker that was just angry without hearing the other side. I've done that, and I've... I've owned up to that, and I need to probably own up to that even some more, right? But um, that's where that voice of the people. So right, right. and that that makes sense because it's um, for the longest time, you know, truck drivers as a whole weren't heard, right? And so you're bringing you're bringing stories that affect them, you know. Uh, like really like poorly so whether um i specifically remember a couple instances you covered uh, a couple of bad accidents too whether it was that colorado accident or that other one i believe in massachusetts where that guy with the motorcycles like you covered a couple bad accidents which is like bringing awareness to like hey like it's it's okay you know it's okay to want to want the desire to go out there and make money but cutting corners and safety is not a good idea and you've you've certainly um exposed um, you're like, what is that saying? Uh, light, light, um, light tends to, um, cleanse, right. Or something like that. So it's like, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, you're shining you're the light of, you know, social media on the trucking industry, which is really good. Um, and so, but you were, you were setting that up to say, um, uh, that's, uh, so from there you start to get attention and some traction and you, what ultimately, right. what is, how does it work? Congress sends you a letter and says, Hey, Alex, please come to Congress. How does that work? Oh, like, not what, even what close. ended up happening there? <laughs> Not in close. So uh, what ended up happening was I went to a, a Ambest. Uh, they had like their annual meeting. And that's just like a uh, one of the big um, uh, trade shows for truck stops and oil companies and fleet owners and stuff like that. Okay. And so the president of Ambest heard the way I was talking and heard what I was about and said, you know what? I get a plus one. I'm supposed to be bringing my CFO mm-hmm. or – someone else but you know what i'm gonna leave him at home and i'm gonna bring you as my plus one wow and so i had an opportunity and so what happened was natso the national trucking whatnot uh, of america i'm probably ripping that wrong right but they got invited to go to congress to Mm -hmm. talk about trucking and changes and you know should we have more parking all those things so i was able to get a ticket through that way okay because these owners of truck stops, they might own Loves and Pilots and Flying J, but when it comes to understanding truckers, they don't want to look dumb. So they kind of had me as a consultant with them nice. saying, how do truck drivers feel? And right. instead of them kind of not understanding it, you know, you and you and I are in the game. They could look at me and say, hey, this is what that is. Right. And, and, and so that was kind of my that's ticket. really good, though, because, right, I mean, the, uh, politicians, because they might not know certain things about an industry, it takes people like you to help them, you know, shine some light on what's currently going on, how difficult it actually is to find parking at 4 p.m. on, on like on a, on a regular day. And so you're able yeah. to uh, show these politicians how their policies that, that they're considering, they might affect us actually on the ground transporting the freight and, and the things that you buy at the stores every day, right? You were able to shine that light on that situation, correct? Pretty much. And they were very – like when I said there is no trucker shortage. I truly believe in there's no trucker shortage as far as good truck drivers, truck drivers that know what they're doing. You know what I mean? There's a lot of truck – because just the rates alone. If, if we didn't have enough truck drivers, then the demand would be so high that the rates would go up. I mean it's basic math, right? right? But we don't have that problem. Why right. is it that a truck driver will still take it for beans in this market? 
Right. And I, I, you know, know, it's, it's funny because, um, I believe last week on the podcast, I did have a, uh, a company, uh, it was Ansel services and they, they help Mm -hmm. with, they help companies with their recruiting efforts. Right. And so they're able Mm -hmm. to get like drivers, um, you know, through the application process and then get them ready for the trucking companies. Right. And I so asked them that they exact say? question, so, right? And this is this is they said the opposite, right? Right. So they did say that. Well, first of all, turnover is really high in trucking, but they did say they see less interest in the in the job itself, mm. in the career itself. So there are less applicants in general because, and and I I tend to agree with that. Right. Because I mean, I was on the road for five and a half years. I have a million miles under my belt. It's like you've been on the road for many right. years. You have multiple millions of miles probably under your belt. And like, it's not an easy life. It's not an easy job. And, and you got to give it your all. And I do think nowadays, you know, it's like, what does the average trucker make in the United States? I think like 50 some thousand. That's what the statistics mm. are. And granted, is it is very easy for a, tr- a guy to go out there, do two years, get his two years under his belt, right? Just to, no accident, so he gets two years. And then from there, he becomes an owner-operator. And like your experience and like your uncle, as an owner-operator, you're making 100000 150000 right? Um, like net, yeah. let's say, right? You're grossing probably two fifty, three hundred thousand, but net, you're probably some, some there in the, in the entry level six figures. And by all accounts, that's not bad. But the problem is a lot of people don't even want to do those two, three years because, you know, they're missing out events at home. You know, I've missed birthdays, anniversaries, like I've missed tons of stuff. And a lot of people don't even want to put those two, three years to get that initial experience in. Um, and so yeah. it, it was it was interesting hearing that from them. But I totally understand where you're coming from, because it's like when there was actually a shortage, right? Like we're talking 2021, tw- like late 2020, early 2021. When there was how are the rates, shortage, Alex? How was the how rates? Are the rates right? Alex? How were the rates, Bro, they were good. The rates were good. And I, I so like, I, I'm, I'm, and this is the why I, this is why the podcast exists. Like, we got to figure out this stuff. Like, okay. hold on. When there well, was actually a shortage. Real quick. What? Yeah. Yeah. So let me debate this real quick. And, uh, you know, I wish those, uh, the recruiter company was on the show to debate them, right? Right. For the people listening to this, just straight up. This is kind of why people um, um, watch my stuff, right? Mm. I'll tell you why. The reason why is because if I own a recruiter company, it does not benefit me to tell anybody that there are so many truck drivers, there's abundance of truck drivers, and I have the service that you don't need. Right. Right? And so I'm really quick. To follow the trail of money. Okay. And so. When it comes to recruiting companies. Regardless of true or not. It is definitely a thousand percent beneficial for them. To let people know all the statistics. Of a trucker shortage. And how their services could help. Right. Well, okay. And uh, look, it was a really great company. I they, like the, the two guys that took the time to sit down and do the pod. It was fantastic. Um, but they, yeah, were just yeah, going, yeah. they were just going over the data. Right. And the data shows right. that there has been a declining interest in the field as a whole. And I agree with that. I'm, I'm right? just kind of busting. I'm just kind of uh, busting balls a little bit. But, but I the, could the see how is, inevitably you, know, you want to promote your service. Like, hey, there's a trucking shortage. Hire us. We can help you with that. I totally understand that aspect. But yeah. by all accounts, like it, there is there does seem to be that trend like what's that survey like i remember reading about it like the number one like mm-hmm. when you when young people were asked like 13 to 15 well like or 12 to mm-hmm. 15 when they were asked what did they want to become when they grew up a huge chunk of it was youtuber uh, yeah. uh, like which would be dreadful like, and i would tell them not to do that at all but you know what uh, i actually would re- agree with the uh, this recruiting company right. you know i was just busting balls but because you know the reason why recruiter companies are, are are important is because they actually have connections and they understand the culture of trucking and they're able to connect the two and so that's regardless who you are uh you might think Walmart is the best company and you know none of us are sponsored by them and they pay 110 120,000. Even if they pay extremely well, you're going to still need a, a recruiting company within that company to push the paperwork but also to uh, let the truck driver understand the culture to know if they should work there or not regardless, right? right? And so I, I think recruiting companies and all that is uh, uh, fine, you know, but when it comes down to it, I really think that 
I agree that trucking is not a favorable job. Okay, you gotta like being alone. You gotta. Okay, so let me let me paint trucking for you. Uh, uh, to a person that isn't a truck driver, and you tell me if you agree with this, Alex. Right. Hey, man. Everyone's gonna cut you off. Majority of the day, people aren't gonna respect you. Uh, uh, law enforcement is, could be tough on you because it's uh, federally, you know, uh, regulated. Uh, when by the time you get to where you need to go, they might not even know you're supposed to be there, and you're gonna be sitting there for another two days. And maybe get paid 50 bucks for waiting. And if you did the math of how much time you're on the road, you probably get paid $2 an hour. Would you like to be what I'm talking about? They, and everybody would say no. Right. But but the honest truth is why is trucking around? Trucking is around because most people don't know how to make money. That's just the truth. There's no disrespect to anyone. Myself, I went to college. I couldn't break 50 grand a year. Mm. So you're telling me I could go out and go trucking and possibly make 75K? Right. I'm going to want to try to break and make a little bit more money, you know? And so that's what trucking does is trucking, no disrespect to any truck driver out here. This is where I could get canceled. But (laughs) the mental capacity to be a trucker and the skill set are two different things. But to get that CDL, you can pass it if right. you know what I mean. Right. Yeah, and it, it's funny because um, I was lo- recently looking into things like e- electricians. Right. Electricians are required to do two years apprentice, and then before they can uh, before they can go out and there go on their own. And some and states vary on that, but like it's at least two years that they have to be an apprentice, or there's a certain minimum hour, yeah. hours. It's like. Could you imagine like, hey, yeah, you got to go be a company driver for two years before you can actually go out and become an owner operator. Like that would be ridiculous. Right. And so um, trucking, certainly the barrier to entry for trucking is definitely on the lower side. And I slowly it is creeping up, you know, whether it's that um, the new law that came into effect earlier this year for CDL school. So now every person that wants to get get their CDL has to go to school. So they're slowly trying to bring that up to maybe increase safety or um, or to reduce the amount of accidents on the road, uh, which is good. But it's ultimately it still is a low barrier to entry. But the the downside right, of trucking right, right. is like you know ultimately is you know like the when when the company first hires you and this is like what you were discussing about recruiters when 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 a company first hires you oftentimes it can set you up to be mistreated as a driver and that puts and that yeah. puts the person just uh, it puts a bitter taste in in the new applicants or new hires mouth right it it really does mm. because it's like i've heard horror stories of like yeah they put me on the road for 8 weeks and you couldn't come home for 8 weeks you just started with this company and you don't like you haven't like there's people that haven't left their house in 15 years right there's they just work <laughs> in their city right they go home to their office to maybe hang out on the weekends with their buddies and that's and that's all they've lived in the, essentially the three blocks from their house for the last 15 years and you send this person on the road for eight weeks like there is no like break-in period it's all like and companies can certainly mistreat their new hires and then we wonder why the turnover is high so i would say the way to put this is like there definitely is uh, a, a new applicant shortage, as in because there's less interest. Because you know now certainly you could start a TikTok, you could start a YouTube channel, and you could start uploading videos. Mm-hmm. You could do jobs from home and make forty, fifty grand a year. That seems more attainable nowadays for sure uh, because of the internet. Yeah. And so that's why trucking is certainly um, like this is my opinion, but that's why trucking certainly has lost its interest. But the appeal of trucking is that it is a good career. You can have a decent life doing it, and you can make good income. And just like your uncle, if you're smart with your money, then you can actually set up your life financially very, very well. Um, but I, oh I yeah, think no, the I, I think I, I, trucking is no, I agree because trucking is one of those things where I'd be honest with people. If you're 25 years old and just say, or you're 21 years old and you're willing to eat dirt for nine years. You're pretty much you're Gary Veeing it. You're you're willing to live in this truck, and after two years of having a job, you go out and you go get an FHA loan. You go out and buy a fourplex. You rent out the three. You you rent out even the fourth one, but to a, a you know a roommate, right? Because you gotta do that legally. And um, 
you you do that and you just stay on the road for nine, ten years. Guess what? You're gonna have a couple properties paid off. You're gonna have a lot of you're gonna have a couple hundred K in the bank. Right. And you're gonna have a good way to set up your foundation because I've said this a lot in the past, and you could agree with this or not, Alex, right? Is uh who you're with and where you live pretty much dictate your life. Okay. A thousand percent. Okay. You know, um, if you have uh, a house and you have uh, a partner in crime and you have uh, children that you love, guess what? That's going to dictate how hard you're going to have to work for the rest of your life. And now you can't put a number on kids and you can't put a number on happiness Mm -hmm. because we're not talking about happiness right now because money does not equal happiness. But definitely family, who you're with, where you live, that's a big indicator. And so for 10 years, if you're a single guy or girl, you're 21, you want to get OTR on the road, you got no kids, you got nowhere to live, and you could just stack? Right. Right. That is like, that's a major come up for anyone that is whatever, a medium or a blue collar or even a broke status starting. Like, and this is your opportunity. How old are you, Alex? I'm 37. Okay, I'm 30, okay? And it's like, you're right. absolutely right that if you, at 21, you get your CDL, and you can get your CDL under 21, you just have to do in-state jobs, okay? And so it's like, if you get your yeah. CDL before 21, start working in-state, doing local deliveries or something like that, whether it's garbage trucks or stuff like that, and then you go on the road, you can reduce your expenses by not having an apartment, by not having you know home internet. Like you can have a, a cell phone yep. with tethering. So you can reduce your expenses aggressively in trucking because then you can actually live in the truck. And then you can, hopefully if you're wise with your money, you can start setting aside some money, get your properties. And at 30, like I still feel young. I like, I feel great, but it's like, people could be in the same situation. Um, but what I talked to someone recently and they're doing it team him and his wife. They're like, we're going to do team mm. for two, Perfect. three years. And we're going to set up our life as a team because they're able to gross as a team for four fifty five hundred thousand dollars gross instead of as a soul. But they that, still know that's truck. awesome that you brought that and up. They have one truck I got payment, a video. Right? And so they're able oh, to what, really know what truck payment. You're right. You're right. right. And so now they have, you know, now they don't have, they're trying to cut their costs on the, on the home front and they're like, okay, great. Let's just go full into this and work out, like work hard. And that can set us up for the next 10, 15, 20 years. So trucking does uh, provide a lot of people opportunities and, um, the, and the barrier to entry is on the lower side, but this is what I want to get into. Like, what's your opinion on some of the laws maybe that are coming up on the horizon? The big one that I think is coming up is, and this come, kind of comes to recruiting and whatnot is, um, the reducing the interstate from 21 to 18, right? You're with your, did right. that come up at all, um, in Congress or anything like that? Um, like what's your opinion on reducing 21 to 18? You know, it's so funny because, uh, you know, without getting political, uh, the people in Congress are worried more about how much tax breaks they can make from charging stations than they are from anything else. So here's something deep right here. They believe Mm -hmm. that everything uh, petroleum, diesel, fossil fuel is going to be gone. But the only thing that won't be gone with fossil fuel is aviation. Okay. Because they believe that, you know, they don't trust solar power to, you know, fly planes yet. Right. So they're directing all their beans and bananas and corn nuts and everything into aviation for fossil fuel. And deeming it like it's going to be tomorrow, which it's not, that all semi-trucks are going to be electric. So they're thinking about charging stations, how much credit can every state get, how much tax break can they get, how much tax money back will the feds get. Like they're they're interested in that. So, so you're, they're not really worried about addressing actual trucking problems. They're more worried about like, hey, this transition to electric, right? How do we speed up this transition to electric? And the technology, to be honest, might not be ready because, you know, what, like, but I think both of us were at the Mid-America Truck Show earlier this year. And we, yeah. like, I asked some of the people there, like, what the range is on those semi-trucks. And it's like 120 miles. 
It's like 120 it's, it's, miles. What do you want me to do with that? Like, unless you have some local garbage delivery route, it's like, mm-hmm. or pickup route, it's like, that's the only thing you can do. And then what? You got to come park the truck and let it charge for six hours, right? It's a, so it's, mm-hmm. um, the, the, that is, that, that's an interesting perspective. And so, like, actually addressing any of the trucking problems didn't come up, right? During that Congress. They're, they're not worried about it at all. And it, it, it was very disappointing. Mm-hmm. It, it was extremely disappointing. Um, you know, and we're Again, without like, getting political, like re- every reducing, time reducing the age to eighteen didn't come up. We're talking like not enough parking for truckers that didn't come up. Like actually, nothing that you, both you and me on the road struggled with. They didn't like, or the mm-hmm. you know, or scams or frauds or like none of that. Like they they specifically. So just, let me tell you why. So why let me tell you why none of that comes up? Because I think the reason why people listen to anything I'm talking about mm-hmm. is because. I have access to both sides. Okay. I have access to the truck drivers mm-hmm. and the bigger ups and the, the corporations want to see how they could control me. Okay. Right. And so I play a very thin line of talking to everybody to have a good understanding. Okay. And being a professional and not, not busting balls on both sides per se. Right. Right. And so when it comes down to it, Think about the people in the transportation world that are even allowed to go to Congress. Natso's allowed to go. Why? Because they represent oil. They re- represent truck stops. Right. And they are um, – and this is hopefully not like you know uh, a, a foil hat and uh, whatever. You know, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? But there's only two really that represent – Natso is the oil and trucking. Mm-hmm. And the second is OIDA. Right. Who represent supposedly owner operators, which I'm friends with all those guys over there. But also, there are the mega carriers that invest into OIDA as well. So, the only people talking to the people that make laws are those two people mega carriers and oil and truck stop owners. Right. We don't even get to be at the table. Right. You don't get a voice. You're playing a critical role, Alex. See, you underestimated how important you are in the industry, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> nah, not I. What it is is I tag along and I, I'm willing to play the game to be professional mm-hmm. and not to be this person. Because if they're having an opportunity to go to Congress, do they really want one of us to go up right away and go F? F F F F this more parking because it's it's easy more truck parking broker transparency, right? Mm-hmm. Higher wages, right? ELD, let us stop the clock for three hours. I mean, it's it's very basic. Which what truck drivers need? We feel pressured, but then there's a debate. Well, why do you feel pressured? Does that mean that when you were on paper logs, you were doing it illegally? We're not going to go at. at we're not going to go there. Right. But there's probably a lot of, you know what I'm saying? Right. So there's, there's, co- uh, there's competing interests, right? And so it's like the government has to balance the competing interests. Like how do they, you know, how do they navigate the, these, these weird waters where it's like, well, companies, you know, the research says that you need at least eight hours of sleep to refre- feel refreshed for the next day. And, right. you know, it takes you about an hour to wind down and an hour to wake up. So that's where the 10 hours off duty comes from and eight of which have to be in the sleeper. So it's like, that's where that comes from. But on top of that, it's like, well, not everyone is like that. And so it's like, how do you pass laws that like work with the individuality that is each American and how they operate right. compared to what the research says of like, uh, you know, and, and that can be expanded to like, how do you balance, you know, whether it's union or, you know, or versus the corporations, how do you like, it, that can be expanded to many different things, but it is interesting. No, uh, seeing that they, they are primarily focused on this transition from diesel to electric. Right. Which right. I mean, by all and, accounts, and why are some, they important? Yeah. Why are they what, you know, and that's the thing, right, Alex? So why is it a, hey, it's very basic. The way senators, congressmen, and women, they create the laws, but the way they create their laws is they don't have time to understand every industry. Right. So they use lobbyists to tell them, hey, we represent the truckers. This is what this is. Mm-hmm. Well, 
That's why they say bring back the unions, bring back this, bring back that. But if you think about it, do we have lobbyists telling congressmen and women exactly what we want? And we don't. Right. Right. And so what, is because that something you have you're to go looking to the into chain. about putting your like, trying to get uh, your if foot I have in the door? to be that for people? Could you, yeah. Could you open an yeah, association? If I, yeah. If I honestly have to be that for people, I, I, I'd be willing to be that because um, one thing I will say is I am not a politician. I know nothing about Paul. Uh, being a politician at all, but I do know one thing: I ain't a, I ain't a sellout. It, right. The number one rule of a politician is supposed to be that whatever the majority feels, mm. you as a representative should voice the majority. Right. But they don't voice the majority. They voice Whoever what makes thinks. sense. Right. Right. We don't uh, have to get into that, but yeah, right, and, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a challenging time, and like, but on one hand, you know, it, it it does leave companies the opportunity to learn the industry and to improve it, right? Like a lot of a lot of uh, companies are getting funded in the trucking space now, right? right? Like especially you right. know because of you know because of twenty 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 and twenty twenty one, um, you know a lot of venture capitalists started to fund supply chain startups, right? So that is it is yeah. now bringing a little bit of in, in, innovation to the industry that may help some of these transparency or parking things. It's like imagine if you could I buy agree. a imagine if you could buy a pass, right? On put it on your truck. And it would be your right. a parking pass that in any state in any truck stop that's in the fleet. It's like a imagine a fuel card that like you know you can get a discount at any truck stop. You can park at any truck stop, and you always have a spot. Like so, it's like you know there's there's probably um, it, it leaves the room for companies to innovate in the industry if they aren't passing right. a bunch of laws for every little thing. So that there's there's definitely and, an, and a, that's good, the thing. I, to that. I like that. You know, I, I like that. You know, you ever think of this one, Alex? If you and I were mega carriers, uh-huh. wouldn't we want our opposing, I'll just say the opposing people, which are owner operators, right? Right. If we're mega carriers, everyone's like, owner operators, shut down, shut down, shut down. If I was a mega carrier, I'd be like, yeah, shut down. Right. So I could take over. Right. Right. I mean, they want your company you to drivers shut down. won't shut down, so they will they will be able to expand their market. If I'm a mega carrier, I want you to shut down. Why haven't you shut down yet? Right. Please shut down soon so that I, as a mega carrier, can do that. So I think that's the problem is, and it's no disrespect to truck drivers because some of the smartest people I know are truck drivers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that we make a lot of emotional decisions and we voice a lot of emotional things. So the first thing an emotional person will do is say, hey, I don't like what's going on in the, in America. So let's get 20 of our buddies and block the I-5, I-10, the I-95. Well, all you're really doing is just pissing people off. Right. Right? I mean, you're not really, you're not really doing anything because their process is, well – why don't you just get an appointment with your councilman or woman and then get it to a letter, then have opportunity to have an appointment at Congress? Like that's the right chain of command. So that's why like now I'm like, hey, guys, there's a survey. They want to take away our parking and they're putting this survey on the FMCSA.gov website on for 60 days. Right. Well, guess what? Before there would only be four people that write in the survey. And so they'll base it off of those four people and say, hey, I guess the four – no one really cares about this. We'll take away parking. Right. No that, one's – you know? That makes sense. And and so this is, again, why you're playing a vital role in this, that you're helping truckers that maybe are frustrated. You're helping them learn what the process is to get their voice heard, right? That is, that is essentially what you're doing. And that's – I'm trying to do, and, you know, right. and, that's, and that's all that is, like – I'm not bigger than anything. I don't know anything about anything. But what I do know is, hey, I actually have the time right now to find out what regulations and things are going on. Right. And look, guys, the ELD, they want to start uh, putting ELDs in 2000 pre-exempt uh, trucks. Guess what? They have a survey that they're going to take your opinion in the next 30 days. And then if no one writes anything, they're just going to think because you got to think. Congressmen and women are lawyers and, and 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 suits. Right. They go through their chain of command. We put out a survey 
and none of y'all cared. Right. So I guess no one cares. I mean, right. that that's how I I feel about it. Right. Right. Well, that and, you know, dude, and I could be wrong. Who knows? You know. Right. And no, that that's that's fine. It's it, they they are reaching out to us, trying to see what our opinions are, and we're not like we're not giving them the feedback that they're looking for. And so it's like by by you shining that light and exposing like here's how this thing goes, um, uh, then it makes it easier for them for the voices to be heard. That's really good. And yeah, that that example on i five, like man, it's it's tough because on one hand, I want guys, you know, guys and gals in the industry to like to protest when they're not happy with certain things. Right. But I get it, but right. Right. Of you, course, you also of have to like, think about the optics of the situation, right? Someone's commuting to work and their I five is blocked. Like call the police, get them out of here. You know, like the regular person that's on their way to their job, whether it's at some right. fast food place or whatever the case may be, they don't, they don't understand that. Hey, truckers are actually suffering. It's like you blocking the freeway gives it negative optics. Right. So it's like, you got to put that right. into consideration too when you're doing those types of things, and so it, it's a balancing act, man. It's it's not an easy job. But oh yeah, yeah. More awareness to the industry is good. So and um, dude, and I, I know you're a busy guy. I don't want to take too much too much of your time. So I appreciate you coming oh, on. Oh man, I got any uh, whatever you any need, final man. words, you Alex. Give us, give us some wisdom. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Um, trucking is going to be around for a while. It, it really is going to. You're not going to really see a shift for another twenty years. Mm-hmm. And that's just the truth. So if if you find yourself being in a position in your life where you are uh, working two jobs, three jobs, and you, you're just finding yourself just drowning, just like every other American is, then hey, trucking is a it couldn't be a solution for you, you know. And and there's nothing wrong with being a truck driver for eight years. And making some money and then finding out a little bit about yourself because I think when you – and we're talking about over the road driving. Right. That's what a lot of you will do. Uh, you find yourself when you travel. Your ideas come out. You meet people. Things right. start happening. And from that, you might grow to become this new person. And so I just I just champion trucking. Um, is it what it was? It never will be. But every year, every driver will say it was never what it was. Right. But well, can you provide for your family? Yes. And, you know, you could have a good life. Like, I've never met a truck driver that actually worked his butt off that couldn't provide for his family and had a home and had some nice cars. I mean, you know what I mean? So right. it's a way. It might not be your way, but it's a way. Right. You know, don't rule out the option for trucking. Right. It's like if you don't like your current job, if you don't like currently what your situation is, it's like expand your horizons. Don't rule out trucking as an option. Give that a good hard look, because, you know, like you said, truckers are able to provide. It is a you know, it is a job that will be around for a certainly an extended period of time into the future. Um, So that's awesome. Well, like I said, man, Alex, thank you so much for having uh, for coming on the show. 